every single Chinese restaurant in Yokohama Chinatown is fake except this one. Gaijin. <laughs> yeah. Happy. Are you a happy Gaijin? You're not a Gaijin. Gaijin. Happy Nihonjin. Happy Nihonjin. Happy Nihonjin. Happy Nihonjin. Happy Nihonjin. Yay. Yay. Welcome to Woo. Chinatown. What, what station is this? This is Ishikawa Cho in Yokohama. And today we're just going to be um, hanging around um, Yokohama, Chinatown. I'm here with Oriental Pearl, Hi. if you know who she is. Please subscribe, say hello, and let's see what there is to do. All right, let's go. That's where we're heading to, right? Yeah, Kotobuki Cho. <laughs> I always take you to the nicest places in Japan. Yay. This, this is like the second slam that you brought me to. <laughs> you were willing to come, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go, Even let's go. after the last experience. But first Chinatown, okay. get some food, right? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, Chinatown. Apparently this, the food here is Japanified? Yes. Japanified Chinese food. And why is it so? <laughs> well, of course we're trying to appeal to Japanese people, their customers, just like, you know, they make Chinese food different in America. But the way you can tell that this is really Japaneseified is they don't have these kind of combo meals in China. You just order the dish one at a time. So they're doing the little plate thing. In China, they don't have all these little intricate plates like they do in Japan. So the food's not going to come out like this. And this is for one person. Okay. Wow. It's rare in China to have a meal or a restaurant that's serving just one person portions. You usually share okay. with your group. So at home, we share with our group. Oh, okay. So we That's more like, authentic. And then like, this, this right here, this little onion tofu, which is almond tofu, kind of like a dessert. Definitely don't get that. <laughs> okay, don't get China. don't get that in China. They you don't get. Oh, you that. don't not get that, that in it's China. Bad, okay, okay, okay. But they don't all right, all right, get right. stuff like that, especially not as a set. And then they have this kimono here which is the pickled vegetables, and that's very Japanese. Yeah, <laughs> and I then see. if you look behind you, this is shark fin soup. And <laughs> although they do eat, that's very controversial, shark fin yeah, soup. Yeah, it's although, banned in, in Europe, I think. Is it? Yeah. Although they do eat shark fin soup in China and here in Japan, you don't see it like this. Like every restaurant is selling shark fin soup, and yeah. that's just appealing to the local It's like taste. the top, top, um, like, Free thing. and usually people have it at their wedding, they don't have it for lunch. Ah. <laughs> okay. yeah. Cha, yeah. This is apparently the best restaurant in, in Yokohama, Hands Chinatown. Down, it's the only authentic one, and the line is really long on the weekends. It looks so small and obscure and off in an alley but wow. this is the only authentic one you know i i always uh, moving things around sorry about the vlog mm -hmm. being so wonky but i um i've done a, a video before in yokohama chinatown mm -hmm. and i told the viewers that the bit pretty much the best places to go are the side streets oh. um from my experience because the main street ha has so many queues and so many lines and you can pretty much get the same like snacks and sweets. So the line for this one oh. is very long on the weekends. It's perhaps longer than any line on the main street. Okay, okay. But it's like the Chinese people that live in this area, they come here. They make their own oil. It's Whoa. Sichuan style. It's really okay. good. So to be continued, I must return. <laughs> all the others are fake. Not that they don't taste good, but all the others, every single Chinese restaurant in Yokohama Chinatown is fake except this one. Awesome. Let me know if you have been to this. <laughs> Also, and let we me know if, you, if, you, if you're know. Chinese and you've been to this place. <laughs> uh, I want to know. <laughs> I am looking for a panda. <laughs> it's a in panda Chinatown. with um, custard filling you know. in Chinatown. I saw it back in February. The queue was too long. 
I thought I'll come back for it. I came back for it, and the, and the place was shut. Oh, so, you know they taste the same whether it's shaped like a fish, shaped like a panda. Yeah, it's if we can't the find material. a panda, we can find something similar. Okay. Okay, another animal style. Yeah. I, I wonder. All right, we're gonna go on an let's adventure go, go. and try to find this. Let's do if, it. If they have such a thing, it would be on this street. Okay. If that exists. It it's does exist. Panda. Panda man, panda. Happy guy Jin. Yeah. Are you a happy guy Jin? You're not a guy Jin. Happy Nihon Jin. Happy Nihon Jin. Yay! Yay! I must admit that this panda looks a bit sad. He got sunburnt. His skin is peeling. It's like, but it's still cute. It's still cute. <laughs> the bad thing about panda, well, pandas, or the bad thing about cute food is that when you bite into it, it's like, oh! But this one's not that cute, so it's No, okay. it's a little bit deformed. <laughs> it's now going to be a little bit more deformed. It's a little but... bit deformed. <laughs> out of ten, three out of ten. <laughs> it's, it's not what I expected. The insides of the panda are a little bit dry. I don't know what he digested the day before, but yeah. Yeah, the biggest problem tourists have is where to find trash cans. Oh. How long have you been walking around with that? At least an hour. More. We got that like oh, at the station. You're right. Like uh, since like three hours, three and a half hours. Right. Find some, um, find some vending machines. Bottles and cans are easy to yeah, throw yeah. out. Yeah, bottles and cans are easy. They're usually available at the station. There's garbage cans um, or on the street next to vending machines. The difficult thing is like when you go to Chinatown or go to a convenience store and you got little wrappers like mm -hmm. this. Some stations have it where you can throw it out, but on the street it, it's not. And gonna then happen. like a convenience will probably be the next. Place right, for but that. That, that's not just a Japan thing. Korea is the same. Okay. If you remember, there was but yeah, Korea. pretty much the same system. Mm. I walked around with um, my pockets full of paper, like plastic, <laughs> plastic for days. It, oh, when you were traveling. <laughs> yeah, and even even here, like I walk around and I put stuff in my back pockets, mm -hmm. and then I forget to take it out, and then I pack <laughs> my shorts, and then the next day I'm like, wait, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, trash in Japan. You won't find it on the floor mainly. You will find it in people's pockets. <laughs> yeah, you take it home and separate it. Uh -huh. Adventures with Oriental Pearl, she's brought me to another slum. You know, you <laughs> wanted to see the non-touristy areas. This is a non-touristy part of, um, of Japan. It's We're your 20th visit to Japan. I mean, what else can I show you that Yokohama, you haven't already seen? Yokohama, literally 10 minutes walk from Chinatown and the old people start appearing. Right, that's this area. It's yeah. a slum for elderly people. Mm. So this one is bigger than the other one that you took me to. Yeah, we went to the smallest one. And you said this one's more like in your face. Yeah. The other one is a little bit more. I, I thought it we was like... We had to go yeah. searching for the other one. Yeah. It, wasn't, it wasn't apparent until we got to the welfare center. Okay. Anyway, that's going to be her video. You can check it out. <laughs> I don't know if oh, she, be a she already video. did a video on, on this area you can I check just, out. I kind of want to come back and find the guys who were in my first video that gave me a tour and just ah. tell them thanks and say hi. Cool, cool, cool. People say that Japan is clean and it is, but that those are bags of pee, guys. Bags of pee. I was time. walking by and I smelt pee. You know, people people say that um, Japan is a is a country of rules, and it's true. Japan mm -hmm. is definitely a country of, of rules. Like, step out of line, and there will be somebody who has a job, and whose job is basically to put you in line. It's true. It's, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but over there, there's a whole illegal dumping ground yeah. where, where you know it actually says that they're being watched and stuff like that. Yeah, surveillance, <laughs> surveillance. camera in use. 
Yeah. Okay, here's the thing. We don't even know if the people that directly live in here are dumping stuff because it costs money in Tokyo if you want to throw out anything, an old sofa, an old TV. You have to pay for it, and it can be quite expensive. It could be almost $100 to throw out your TV. So people maybe not even living in this area will take advantage of this and just dump their trash there for free. Uh. Yeah, I saw that in Osaka too. They were protesting in the slum area against the welfare office closing and all the people in the city, even outside that area, are just dumping their dryers, fridges, washing machines because they don't want to pay yeah. to have it okay. taken away. Um, but so this area here is, is a little bit more evident than, than Sanya. Sanya is different. Sanya, you could walk through it and maybe not even notice the that, other that, slum. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that it's a slum. Um, until you get to a park and you're like, holy cow, what is this? Yeah. But here, people are dressed a little, you know, just the way that people are dressed. Mm -hmm. um, you can just tell that they're like hand me downs or, or yeah. like older clothes. Yeah. Um, it's just, there's a, definitely a feel in the air, air here. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot more poorer people and I don't want to use poor because you know at, at the end of the world at the end of the day money is does not equate to to happiness or anything like that but there are poor poorer people it's more evident I've seen more poorer people here it's than in Sanya does that make any sense <laughs> yeah Sanya is aging out that yeah. one's getting smaller and smaller this one is going in that direction yeah instead of you know having more people on say Katsuhogo which is life what is it called? Salary protection? My arm protection? is going to fall off. <laughs> Life protection. Um, it's basically the government welfare program in Japan. These areas, although there's an increasing elderly population, um, this area used to be for hiatoi, which is day laborers, and okay. they all aged out. Sanya aged out faster. This one still has some younger people, maybe yeah, 50s yeah, yeah. or 60s. I mean, even, even the people that I've seen here that look like they're in their 40s, late 40s. Ah, uh, yeah. Know, look look poorer well there's a lot you know, of people with um learning disabilities that yeah, are yeah. Katsuhogo. lots of I've, i have never seen so many wheelchairs either uh, yeah, um, in one area so super interesting i wonder what happened up there though <laughs> what happened to that sign yeah. <laughs> this sign here oh yeah oh. good question this is like a mini golden guy here if you want to go to the more maybe potentially dodgy <laughs> um, like golden guy outside of Tokyo with here in Yokohama people. with the old people um, yeah this is actually really pretty in, in a in a Japanese way it kind of is what on earth have you got me <laughs> this is called Douhua it's popular in Taiwan and in mainland China so we have little pieces of tapioca pearl, we have some gelatin in here and some red bean paste and emo, which is sweet potato. So I like sweet dig potatoes. in. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a go, give it a go. What do you like and to start ice with? On the bottom. I started with the sweet potato. What do I think? What do I think? Um to be honest, it's definitely a texture thing that I'm not used to. It's very, very chewy. <laughs> and um so I'm getting used to the chewiness, but in terms of flavor, if you've traveled to Japan, you'll be fine with this because uh, all the flavors are very like the anko and all that. Whoa, it's loud, it's loud. But the anko and the flavors are all very subtle, sort of like um. Japanese flavors, and I'm to explain it, or Asian flavors. If you're new, you might find this difficult to have the first time. But after 20 trips, um, and this is the thing with Japanese food, they sneak this, this sort of, they kind of sneak it into your food slowly. Like um, through, through when you when you order something, they'll, have, like, they'll put a little bit of sashimi next to your <laughs> next to your meal, or they'll give you a little a little cup of um, green tea. Eventually, you've had so much of it that they sneaked it into into your diet, so you're okay with this kind of thing. What are you doing? You have a camera in the family mart. <laughs> you're just breaking all the rules. It's been a fun day hanging out with Oriental Pearl. Check out her channel if you haven't already. If you're interested in learning or you know language in, in general. This this yeah, woman Asian is like languages. 
ridiculously good at languages. Like oh, no. Japanese, freaking amazing. Chinese to to the point that people turn around thinking that she's actually Chinese. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. And now Vietnamese. Vietnamese and Korean. What? Yeah. And, oh yeah, and Korean. I forgot. Korean. I've been learning that for years. And year. Spanish. Oh, that's, that's so good. <laughs> that yeah, one I amazing. Can't claim. Anyway, thanks for watching. Stay positive and be a happy guy. Bye. Bye. Getting a pocket Wi-Fi or a Japan data SIM card can be a game changer when traveling in Japan for a number of reasons. There are many providers and I've teamed up with Sakura Mobile, one of the most reputable services trusted by many travelers in the Ninja Monkey community. Whilst free Wi-Fi is becoming more common in Japan, particularly in major cities, tourist spots and in hotels, it's still not universally available and might not always be reliable. Therefore, a connection to the internet on the go will help with navigation. Japan has an extensive transportation network and having access to applications like Google Maps can help you navigate unfamiliar cities, find the nearest train station or guide you on walking paths. Online translation tools can help overcome language barriers, especially when dealing with menus and signs. An internet connection on the go will also allow you to stay in touch with family members and friends, share your experiences on social media and check emails or make calls. And accessing information and services on the go, for example, tourist attraction opening hours or even booking tickets online is also essential. So. How about considering using my affiliate link to purchase either a pocket Wi-Fi or a SIM or an eSIM? I'll receive a small commission at no additional cost to you and you'll also be supporting the channel. So it's a win-win. Scan the QR code for an even easier way to access the link.